Hey everyone, Zot here, and welcome to another composition playstyle guide. In this guide, I'm going to be going over everything you need to know to master one of the ever popular comps in WoW Arena, Jungle Cleave, which is Feral, Hunter, Discipline Priest. In this first section, we'll be taking a look at why Jungle is such a good comp by looking into its strengths and weaknesses. Starting with its strengths, Jungle is an extremely powerful comp for a number of reasons. These include your insane consistent pressure thanks to Feral Bleeds and Hunter Poisons, meaning you are dealing very strong damage at all points in the game. For example here, the Jungle Cleave is primarily focusing the Mage, but due to the keeping their consistent pressure rolling onto the Rogue, once he blocks the Rogue is also low enough that the Jungle can simply swap to him and force another defensive cooldown, making the enemy Priest have a harder time recovering from the pressure. Insane Burst coming from Incarnation and Coordinated Assault, and also Dark Archangel if your priest is playing it, meaning you can global unsuspecting enemies. Insane amount of instant crowd control with the combination of freezing trap and stuns, and even psychic scream coming from your priest. For example here, the jungle start the crowd control chain off with a bash. This ensures the trap will land. The priest then positions himself with a psychic scream, resulting in almost 20 seconds of instant, unavoidable crowd control. Now let's take a look at the weaknesses. Jungle can often have a difficult time against very tanky classes such as Boomkins and Shadow Priests. Due to their ability to outlast and outdampen the jungle, scoring a kill becomes difficult. For instance here, Hydra is up against Owlplay, a formidably tanky composition that loves to go to dampen it. They've taken the game to such a point where Hydra can simply no longer heal the damage, and his Feral eventually goes down due to the raw pressure and limited mana. Also teams with rushdown potential on the Priest are a struggle, compositions like DH Warrior or Turbo Cleave, and some other melee cleaves can often rush down your Priest before you're able to score a kill. For instance at this year's Blizzcon, pen and paper tailor made a composition to exploit this weakness. Demon Hunter, Enhancement, both with strong single target damage and high uptime onto the priest, makes it impossible for him to survive, eventually going down. In this next section, we'll be taking a look at the most important goals you need to accomplish as jungle in order to win games. Due to your low cooldown instant crowd control, it makes rotating through the enemy's cooldowns very important, making sure you consistently do setups with a stun, into trap, onto the healer. Take this game from this year's BlizzCon as an example. Team Reformed have cycled through pen and paper's full defensive arsenal, including Darkness, Trinket, Ironbark from the Druid and are able to kill Du on the Resto Shaman seconds before he gets his Astral Shift back. Good teams will often not die before they have no cooldowns left, so rotating through them, making sure to not fail setups is the key to victory. Your second goal is to maintain your damage. It's important that you keep up both your bleeds and poisons onto your main kill target, and then pump single target damage. You have strong burst as well as good consistent damage, so make sure to utilise both of these. Your third goal is to ensure you never overlap defensive cooldowns. This is because jungle benefits a lot from being an aggressive composition. The more pressure you have, the less pressure you'll have to deal with, and the longer you can remain the aggressor. For example, in this jungle mirror played recently at this season's EU Arena Cup, the Feral of Team Deleters makes the unfortunate mistake of overlapping his survival instincts with his healer's pain suppression. Making a mistake such as this can easily cost you the game, which it did as they unfortunately found out when up against Skillcat Red. Lastly is understanding when to pop your cooldowns. With Incarnation being your main kill window, using it correctly is important. You don't want to pop Incarnation to simply have the enemy Paladin bop it for example. Make sure you think about when to use these strong offensive cooldowns. For instance look here, the Pharaoh decides to pop Incarnation, however there is no crowd control onto the enemy Priest so he simply able is to trade out his Dome of Light, a 70% damage reduction, and simply heal through the damage. If he was to wait for the trap to land, they would have to trade out either Trinket and Barrier or cooldowns from the Feral. It's important to understand when you should be using these strong offensive cooldowns. In this next section, we'll be looking at what your game plan should be when playing jungle against a handful of tier 1 compositions. Starting with RMP, which is usually played with a Frost Mage, and RM Pala, which is usually played with a Fire Mage. Starting with RMP, there are two different strategies you can apply to beat this comp. When you apply them depends on a few factors. It could be as simple as the races that enemies play, or they're simply their playstyle. Starting with the first strategy, this involves opening Rogue with a fast bash into Trap onto the Priest. 
The strategy leaves the mage free casting for the most part, so it puts you on a timer. You generally want to force a strong offense defensive cooldown every single setup, aiming to wait until the rogue opens then instantly rake stunning him and getting up damage, and then going for a bash trap before the enemy team has time to do a setup. Take here for instance, the jungle finds the rogue. They instantly open on him with a pet stun into bash on the priest, followed up by a fear, instantly forcing the trinket evasion from the rogue, meaning he has zero personal cooldowns left. Starting off as the aggressors puts you ahead in almost a turn-based game. The goal is to survive a setup and then do your own, so starting off on the forefront with aggression puts you at a big lead. Repeating this setup once more with offensive cooldowns will easily force the defensive cooldowns from the priest. Take here in the second setup, they land a full trap with incarnation up. This instantly gets the trinket from the priest, meaning next setup is more than likely going to secure the game. As mentioned though, doing this strategy leaves the mage free casting, so you need to look to win quickly and within a few setups, making sure to try to force cooldowns with every single setup. Your feral doesn't need his mobility whilst training the rogue, so needs to use this to assist your priest in stopping up follow up crowd control onto your healer. For instance here, Hydra is caught into a full polymorph, a fear from the priest would be devastating, so the feral bashes the priest and then kicks the mage. This allows Hydra to recover defensively and move for an aggressive play allowing them to win the game. The other strategy is playing for the longer game of going for the mage and having your feral spec into urban grasp, rooting the rogue and generally playing to try to keep him out of the game. Executing this strategy allows you to live a little longer as your hunter should have an easier job stopping crowd control and the mage will find it harder to polymorph your priest having to use his blinks defensively. As for cooldown management, look to use roar of sacrifice on strong setups done by the frost mage. Then communicate with your team to rotate trinkets, survival instincts, pain suppression and even dome of light from your priest. With your priest ideally saving trinket for blind, as sitting through it will easily allow the team to follow up with crowd control. Making sure to use defensive cooldowns on Vendetta and Icy Veins. As his feral is caught in a kidney shot and the rogue commits Vendetta as well as Icy Veins, the feral uses his trinket in conjunction with survival instincts as Hydra is caught in a full polymorph and needs to save his trinket for the incoming blind. You still have Dome of Light as a great answer. Also, it's worth noting that your hunter should take Spider Sting. This will help as a well-timed Spider Sting on a mage burst will stop him from being able to use his instant cast damage, whilst also looking to use his Mending Bandage when they do setups, as this will reduce the rogue's damage and remove his bleeds. For example here, the rogue mage looked to do a setup onto the feral, Dilly helps his feral survive by spider stinging the mage mid setup, silencing him in turn stopping all of his damage. Against Iron Pala with a fire mage, the strategy changes a little. You need to stay constantly aggressive and keep both DPS dotted at all times, with your feral taking thorns for the extra aggression. This is one of the few matchups where multi bleeding both DPS becomes extremely important. This composition has a ton of defensive cooldowns, however the nature of holy paladins mean that they don't actually have that much healing output. They heavily rely on their cooldowns to keep people up. Check out this opening from Dilly's team. They instantly look to have an aggressive opener. As this is such an explosive matchup, starting aggressively from the opener puts you in the driving seat. They instantly land a bash trap onto the paladin, then look to go on the mage. He then temporal shields, so they swap instantly to the rogue. This is what I mean about why it's important to bleed and pressure both DPS. The rogue then evasions and they swap back to the mage. The main reason for this is that due to paladin's plethora of defensive cooldowns, it's always good to have the other DPS low to easily swap to once the paladin either uses sacrifice or blessing of protection. Straight after swapping to the mage, they then force blessing of protection. And check the rogue's health here, he is already low thanks to the constantly swapping on defensive cooldowns. If they were only focusing one target here, they would have to go wait for temporal shield then wait for blessing and protection. However, thanks to pressure in both targets, the rogue is now low also. For crowd control, aim to do the setups the same. Always look to start a crowd control rate chain off with stun, so the paladin can't use his blessing of sacrifice preemptively on the trap, breaking it in the process. As blessing of sacrifice redirects damage to the paladin, 
This means if he manages to get it off before the trap, it will break his trap and mean his teammate would be fine. Here you can see Dilly's team gets the Feral to stun the Paladin, so he can sure ensure he lands the trap. This forces the Paladin to have to use his Trinket to land this Blessing of Sacrifice after. The only major differences are that the Hunter should always be trying to save his Roar of Sacrifice for Combustion, as it makes this cooldown completely useless. Look here, as soon as Dilly sees the Mage use Combustion, he makes sure to use Roar of Sacrifice onto their target. Another thing worth noting is how he utilises Mending Bandage. The main use of this is to remove Bleeds, meaning the Rogue is going to have to reapply Garot, Rupture and his Poisons, setting him behind. Also, the Paladin sometimes might struggle to heal through your pressure, and gets low due to Hand of Sacrifice and spamming his Light of the Martyr to heal. This may make him an easy target to force an extra defensive cooldown, or even score a kill. Just always bear that in mind. But to summarise, look to rotate your cooldowns correctly around Combustion and Vendetta, and try to stop Polymorphs onto your Priest. If you can't stop the initial, at least try to stop the second. Keep up bleeds on both DPS, and try to force crowd control onto the Paladin, swapping on strong defensive cooldowns. Now let's take a look at how you should play versus the Jungle Cleave Mirror and against PHP. In both matchups, it's extremely important to be the team that's offensive and forcing cooldowns first, otherwise you risk losing extremely quickly. Starting with Jungle, as mentioned, it's important that you look to try and start as the aggressors, as the team that lands the first trap will often have the momentum. For instance, check this opener here, Adam Rex instantly lands the trap onto the Priest and then immediately they do their setup onto the enemy Feral. This forces him to have to use Trinket as well as Survival Instincts. Meanwhile, the enemy jungle land their trap but due to the precious skill cap already have and being on the front foot, they don't have to commit any defensive cooldowns. So the strategy is quite simple. You want to be maximising all single target damage onto the Feral whilst crowd controlling the Priest. Look to do the standard Bash, maim or intimidation into freezing trap onto the priest and then to pump the feral with single target damage looking to only pop offensive cooldowns whilst the enemy healer is in a crowd control also be careful with popping strong offensive cooldowns whilst the priest is in a stun as he can still preemptively pain suppression so always wait for the trap as this matchup is a pure damage and crowd control race on each other's feral this means wasting time having to deal with premonition from the priest can easily set you heavily behind in the damage race so always look to trap off of a stun. It's also important to make sure to stun the Feral, as if he plays well he can easily kite away, so ideally look to use one stun for the Priest and then save another stun for the Feral. As demonstrated here by Skillcapped Red, Zunyaki is about to be trapped. Cassidy however is not stunned, so he spends the whole trap toying with both the Feral and Hunter, not allowing them to connect, then turns the tides with a stun of his own. This is such an explosive matchup that your priest should be looking to play hyper aggressive, pushing in for fears off cooldown and pumping as much damage as possible. Forcing the enemy feral defensive is the key to victory. Also look to assist the priest with master's call if required, so he ensuring he lands his psychic scream. For example watch here, I'm going to circle Zunyaki. The enemy healer is in a trap currently, Zunyaki wants to psychic scream off and maintain momentum. He gets rooted midway. However, thanks to the foresight of Adam Rex, he saved Master's Call for this exact moment, allowing Zunyaki to get out of the undispellable tracker's net from the Hunter and secure the fear. On the defensive side of things, make sure to use things early. You want to mainly save Barrier in conjunction with Dome of Light for the enemy Pharaoh's incarnation, as this is the time they will be doing the biggest amount of pressure. Incarnation is a 3 minute cooldown and the damage Pharaohs put out during this time is absurd. Dome of Light is an instant 70% damage reduction you can trade one for one, completely negating that strong burst potential. Also, it's worth using defensives early, using walls at higher health to save your priest using other healing cooldowns, as without cooldowns in this matchup, both ferals can simply die through healing. Another important cooldown is Mending Bandage. Due to how ferals work and the majority of their damage coming from bleeds, removing these at good times can really set a feral behind. Watch here in the opener, Adam Rex waits for the enemy Feral to apply his bleeds and then simply uses Mending Bandage to remove them all. But to summarise, try to be the aggressors and remain in cat form. If you are behind and have to sit in bear, it's a vicious cycle and you will more than likely lose the game. 
The PHP mirror plays out in the exact way, except you're going to deal with the ret dispelling stuns on the disc priest, which can make it a little harder to trap, especially from range. The ret is generally your best target, especially as your priest is able to mass dispel divine shield and can also dispel blessing of protection, the ret's two biggest defensive cooldowns. As seen here, Vanguard's on the ret paladin is in trouble, his healer is caught into a full stun, at which point he is forced to blessing of protection himself. Dilipu's priest is on the case and almost immediately removes it, allowing his team to remain aggressive. Look to play very safe around Avenging Wrath, as this is the only real time the enemy has a chance at scoring a kill. Look to save trinkets as well as Dome of Light for this situation. For those of you not familiar with Rep Paladins in BFA, they are almost a gimmick class. Their damage outside of their wings is very low due to the Azerite traits they run. They have two sets of wings. First is their main wings, Avenging Wrath, and secondly is their what's known as Mini Rings, which is a shorter version lasting only 6 seconds, which is called Hammer of Reckoning. During the time they have these cooldowns up is when you're at risk of dying. For instance, check here. Vanguard's on the Rep Paladin uses his wings, the Feral looks to Kite, and Dilly uses Pet Sack onto him. Then when the Rep Paladin swaps his focus to Dilly, he also looks to Kite, as he knows this is the only time in the game where they're at risk of dying. Also, when facing this comp, they often use Hammer of Justice to land a trap onto your healer. This means you can often kite the Rep Paladin when you're in trouble. As jungle, you don't really have the tools to easily deal with the Rep Paladin's Blessing of Sanctuary every single time, but it's best to force it early. Look to combine a Bash onto the Priest with an Intimidation Stun onto the Rep, or vice versa, whatever works for you. This will instantly force a Trinket Sank from the Rep, at which point your Hunter will have to look for the Freezing Trap for himself dealing with the priest's premonition. Check here how Dilipu and his team deal with this mechanic. They instantly open with a rake stun onto the rep paladin, whilst in turn bashing the priest. This forces the rep paladin to have the trinket in order to get his blessing of sanctuary onto the priest, at which time Dilly waits for premonition and then lands the full trap. Your priest should also be looking for fears during this time, as you should easily be able to play aggressive when wings are down. Look to also take Dark Archangel in the matchup as it's only really burst damage you'll be healing, as the consistent damage of Rep Paladins is very low. The key to winning this matchup is to play defensive when wings are up, and then pulling a 180 and going full offense once they are down. Take here for instance, shortly after the Rep Paladins wings are down, Dilipu's Priest looks to instantly start pushing for a fear. However, to summarize, play defensive around the Rep Paladin's wings, whilst in turn looking to pump damage. Whilst they are down, look to try to mass dispel his bubble, and if you can dispel his blessing of protections, as this will quickly win you the game. Also, remember Rep Paladins have very limited mobility, so look to kite them when in trouble. Now let's take a look at the two Balanced Druid Restoration Shaman comps. Starting with the comp that just won BlizzCon 2018, DH Boomkin Shaman. This is actually an incredibly straightforward matchup. It just requires your team to be extremely aggressive and your priest to be capable of out healing the incoming damage. Your target choice is very simple, tunnel the balance druid. If you are able to deal the pressure you should be dealing, the balance druid will be forced to spend a ton of time in bear form, essentially just waiting to die in a good setup. This also will not allow him to cast clone, negating his offensive pressure and crowd control. For example, look here, the consistent onslaught of single target pressure from both Dilly and his feral is forcing the enemy Boonkin to have no other choice but to sit in bear form. This means he is unable to get off any clones out and simply deal any impactful damage, I meaning you are constantly on the front foot. The biggest win condition of DH Boonkin is to oom your healer or to win with incarnation. To negate this, you should be running during his incarnation to not allow him to deal pressure during this time, or simply dealing enough pressure yourself to force him into bear. Secondly, your healer should be playing very mana efficient looking to play max range and healing with atonement for the most part, trying to drag the demon hunter away and either using roots or mind control or even psychic screams to keep him out of the game. Another great way to deal with incarnation is to have your priest use dome of light and trade the cooldown as you can see here, as the priest is able to keep both his feral and the hunter offensive during the boomkin's incarnation, meaning they are able to force more defensive cooldowns and don't have to run. Deciding if you should be running or remaining out on the map is entirely up to how much pressure you have and if you think you can force anything by staying out. For example, in this clip, Dilly's jungle had crowd control ready for the shaman, so instead of wasting their setup, they decide to trade out defensive cooldowns. 
Note that even though the Demon Hunter can reflect crowd control, he's still a worse target than the Balance Druid, as if you cross CC the Demon Hunter and Shaman when going for a kill, the Balance Druid will create distance and just spam Cyclone anytime you try to build pressure. Allowing the game to play out in this way will usually lead to a loss. As an example, check out this setup by the jungle. They know Mez on the Demon Hunter has his Dispel ready for the trap. To deal with this, they first Urban Grasp root him from the Feral. Into an Intimidation Stun from the Hunter, meaning if he wants to Dispel the trap on Sidu, he's going to have to use his Gladiator's Medallion, which might open him up for a swap later into the game. Another big mistake you need to avoid is crowd controlling during Urban Wall Totem. This is one of the enemy team's strongest defensive cooldowns. If you see this, either line of sight or delay your crowd control, as you will never have the damage required to kill through it. Like Dillipu and his team do here, Sidu, the enemy Resto Shaman, tries to preemptively Urban Wall Totem the setup. Dillipu and his team notice this, so they simply delay their setup and run behind the tomb, waiting for it to expire before pushing. This strong defensive cooldown should always be respected. Also, it's worth noting that due to this way of playing, the Demon Hunter will often aggressively trinket either a Fear, Mind Control or Root, so if you have cooldowns up, he becomes a viable kill target for an easy kill. As for Boomkin SP Resto Shaman, known as Owlplay, this can be played out in a very similar way to DH Boomkin Shaman. The main difference being that you can go for an early kill attempt on the Shadow Priest before they get their damage reduction active from Edge of Insanity. Opening on the Shadow Priest before they get their insanity is almost always worth it if possible. Check out this opener by Skillcapped Red. They threaten the crowd control onto Rattapai on the Shaman, whilst in turn stunning Vilay on the Shadow. What this does is force Vilay to have to react and he opts to use his Trinket and Fear. Whilst this may seem like a pointless exercise, opening on the Shadow is an easy way to force cooldowns and at the loss of almost nothing. Vilay here having to use his Trinket could be the difference between him having to trinket a mass dispel a trap or trinket into life swap later in the game. Against lower rated teams, this can cause them to panic and burn through defensive cooldowns very quickly. Just make sure to switch over to the balance druid after the opener. Just like DH Boonkin Shaman, SP Boonkin Shaman is able to remove crowd control on their healer thanks to Shadow Priest mass dispel. This you can easily look to cover with the Feral's ranged interrupt or even by using intimidation stun onto the priest. Look here for instance, Dilly's Priest communicates that he can land a full fear onto the Resto Shaman. Dilly makes sure to save his interrupt so the enemy Shadow Priest isn't able to instantly mass dispel him. Making sure to always have a cover for mass dispel and communicate about it beforehand is very important, as your well-timed mass dispel can quickly set you behind. So look to do your standard setups of stun into trap onto the Shaman whilst in turn keeping the balance druid under pressure and forced to play in bear form. Fuse and his Hunter go for the standard stun into trap setup onto the Shaman this time using Maim. Due to the pressure they currently have, it allows their Priest to push in for a Psychic Scream off the trap. It's important to look to trap off stuns as this will remove the problem of having to deal with ground in Totem, and the potential for your enemy team to outplay. This setup allows the jungle to force both Void Shift and Dispersion. Defensively, have your Priest play max range, assisting with damage, healing mostly via Atonement. Pushing in for fears at incorrect times can do more harm than it could good in this matchup. For example, check out how Hydra is dealing with the pressure. He is opting to not push in for Psychic Screams due to positioning, and instead being very mana conservative, making sure to deal the most damage possible and utilising his very efficient healing via Atonement. Also in turn helping his jungle pressure with the damage. As this matchup can often go late dampening, being very mana efficient is vital. Also look to play defensive around Incarnation, and at any point where your priest is getting overwhelmed, simply retreat behind the pillar, as this comp lacks the tools to be able to easily follow or deal damage whilst you are line of sight in. Watch how Hydra and his team react once the Incarnation is popped. They almost immediately retreat behind the pillar. As this game is often very long, standing out and trying to brute force defensive cooldowns from the enemy can often cost you vital mana and defensives come late game. As mentioned though, Outplay really struggles at chasing, allowing you to at any time do a full reset and simply let your priest recover. As the disc, you should communicate to your team that you are struggling and need some time to recover from the pressure. As you see here, Hydra relays to his team that he needs some time to recover. They will retreat behind the pillar to avoid damage and allow him to recover. The final comp we'll be looking at is Turbo Cleave, with primarily a Misweaver Monk. 
This matchup is rather straightforward. They will often look to go either your priest in a rushdown strategy or your feral. If they opt to go for your priest, have your priest run around a pillar looking to line of sight the Mistweaver with the DPS on him, forcing him to come into melee range, at which point you can possibly land psychic screams. Check out Dillypoo's priest's positioning in this clip. He is at a pillar and trying to make the monk's life harder by constantly dragging the melee to the opposite side of the pillar, forcing the monk to have to misposition to heal, opening him up for either easier crowd control or potential swaps. You should be able to win this composition fairly quickly, making sure to use stun to ensure traps on the Mistweaver, as to not waste time chasing him for a trap. Instead of dealing with the Mistweaver's rolls and portal, Dilly here instantly stuns him with his pet and follows it up with a freezing trap. This removes the ability for your opponent to outplay your trap, setting you behind. It's also worth noting that you will have to deal with Grounded Totem if you don't stun the Shaman at the same time, so keep that in mind if you don't have a stun available for both targets. Apart from that, it's going to be targeting the Shaman with maximum single target pressure. Also, if your Priest has time to offensively purge, the Mist will find it impossible to heal, ending the game in a few setups. Defensively, look to assist your Priest to survive with both slows and freedoms, and giving him raw sacrifice on stuns if he is the target. As you can see here, when both the Warrior and Shaman connect onto his Priest, Dillipu instantly gives his Priest Roar of Sacrifice to reduce some of the incoming damage. Master's Call can also be life-saving for your Priest in aiding him to survive, helping him build distance from the Warrior and the Enhanced, or even allowing him to land Psychic Screams. Also in this matchup, look to take Urban Grasp for the Warrior, as you won't be looking to ever bleed him up in this matchup, so leave him in full roots can help you survive longer. You should also remember the Monk is a great kill target, and whenever he is using either Way of the Crane or uses his Rolls or Port, he is a viable kill target, as swapping on a mispositioned Mistweaver Monk can easily force defensive cooldowns. For instance here, the Monk mispositions and plays a little too close. As Dilly doesn't yet have Frozen Trap ready, they choose to exploit this by going onto him, forcing his Cocoon and almost winning the game in the process. Monk's healing is also all casted, they have next to no instant healing outside of Way of the Crane, and have to stand still to channel it. Being on the Monk forces him to have to deal with interrupts, so it's often worth swapping onto him when you have good pressure, as this will allow him to not be able to top the Shaman. Moving on to the second half of this guide, we'll be looking at the intricacies of how to play jungle at a macro level, starting with damage and target selection. Do you swap a lot or do you tunnel one target? Jungle can often maintain strong kill pressure on two targets, whilst in turn crowd controlling the healer thanks to their bleeds. Knowing when to bleed up multiple targets and when to focus on single target pressure is a vital part of understanding jungle. With that being said, as I mentioned earlier in this guide, you need to identify kill windows. These can appear on a target that isn't your primarily one mid-game in certain circumstances, such as when facing Holy Paladins and Mistweaver Monks. Take this game here for instance. The jungle has been on the mage for the majority of the game, however due to the rogue trinketing offensively and then mispositioning, they quickly dispose of him inside of a stun. Do you tunnel into defensive cooldowns or do you swap around them? Dealing with defensive cooldowns as jungle can sometimes be tricky, depending on what composition you're facing, but against some compositions where you're looking to multi-bleed, you should always be swapping depending on defensive cooldowns. For instance, up against his PHP, the jungle has both targets low. The Red Paladin uses his defensive cooldown Eye for an Eye, which is a 35% damage reduction. The jungle instantly swaps, the ta swaps target and ends up scoring a kill onto the Hunter. It's for this reason that identifying your win condition and kill target is very important. You don't want to put 100% of your damage onto a mage and simply having him block whilst you wait around for him to come out. Having multiple targets with pressure gives you the great opportunity to swap around. But also knowing when to not bleed is also important. As in some matchups you want to reroute the target and damage will break this. For example here against DH Boomkin, the Boomkin uses Bark Skin. Instead of swapping to the Demon Hunter, they simply train through it as to not break the roots onto the Demon Hunter. As for your offensive cooldowns and burst, while some classes want to burst ASAP every single time, the Feral's offensive cooldowns are 3 minutes, and are best used inside of a good setup, ideally with your enemy not having trinkets. You don't want to pop your incarnation to simply have it countered by one defensive. 
it's almost always best to wait for crowd control before popping your offensive cooldowns. Wait for the trap or stun or even psychic scream to land on the enemy healer. Then look to play aggressive using offensive cooldowns if the time is right. For instance here, Fuse waits for the full trap to land on the enemy druid. Once it lands, he instantly pops his incarnation, knowing he can get full damage out. He forces a block from one mage, cauterize from the other and then finishes the first mage once he comes out of block. But when using your cooldowns, always think what the enemy has to trade in return defensive wise. For instance here, from the enemy's point of view, he sees both incarnation and coordinated assault popped. He then simply instantly trades out his big darkness, which is a 70% chance to miss all abilities, making the death knight almost immortal, despite the huge offensive cooldowns being used. So always make sure to try to make smart trades with offensive cooldowns, as this cooldown could probably have been forced without this overcommitment of offensive cooldowns. Do you only attack DPS or do you swap to healers? Or do you even tunnel healers? When it comes to targeting healers, generally you shouldn't try to do setup kills on them, and instead just focus on killing DPS and abusing your abundance of crowd control. However, with this in mind, there is still opportunity against some compositions to swap onto healers, such as Holy Paladins or Mistweavers. If they hand of sacrifice somebody on their team, he becomes a great kill target. You can often hit him and force extra defensive cooldowns. For instance here, the Paladin sacks his mage to avoid the trap. However, this means he is taking the damage dealt to the mage as well as himself. Swapping to the Paladin in this situation gives him no time to heal himself. Also, some matchups require for you to go onto healers. Against Turbo, for example, looking to crowd control the DPS with roots and having your hunter go diamond dice is a great alternative strategy as monks are very susceptible to dying inside of stuns, and due to the nature of their healing requiring them to stand still, they are easy targets to train down if you can keep up with them or catch them inside of a stun. In this final section, we'll be focusing on how your team should be using its crowd control. Starting with who your team should be CCing, as many of you have already gathered from the game plan section against tier 1 comps, your team should be mostly putting all of your crowd control onto enemy healers. Your bread and butter crowd control is to simply stun a healer with in either intimidation stun, maim or bash and then look for a freezing trap, having your healer then push for a psychic scream depending on the situation. However, against certain compositions like Shadow Priest, making sure to cover mass dispel is important, as you don't want all pressure to be lost if the trap is dispelled. For instance here, Hydra does a great job of moving towards the Shadow Priest when his hunter wants to trap. As the trap lands, he fears the priest. This forces him to have to trinket in order to land the master spell. Also when fighting mages and balanced druids, a clone or polymorph can shut down your setup, so look to kick these abilities during your setups, or even have your priest fear an off target if not able to push for the healer. During their setup onto the shadow priest, Fuse kicks the clone as they are bursting. If the cyclone landed, it would have prevented them from forcing defensive cooldowns. Now should you be using your CC as soon as it's up, or should you be trying to delay it to set up kills? Well this question has two answers. The first is yes, you should always use it off cooldown due to how short cooldown your crowd control is, and how important it is to burn through the enemy's defensive cooldowns. However, it is always incredibly situational. For instance, if a target has blessing of protection or sacrifice up, or a shaman has earthen wall totem down, it's often worth delaying your crowd control until these powerful cooldowns are over. Take a look here, Dilly has his freezing trap ready, However, he, nops, he opts to not use it instantly, as Absturge already has an Urban Wall Totem down. If he was to trap here, the enemy RPS wouldn't really drop health due to the totem. What he does instead is delay his trap until it's expired, meaning his next trap will be way more deadly for the enemy team. Also, take into account your crowd control is for the most part done as a team. You need both your Hunter and your Feral to be in sync as you should always be looking to land freezing traps off stuns or even fears. In most scenarios, as this will completely remove the risk of missing it, or the enemy outplaying with premonition or grounding for instance. For example here, the hunter makes the mistake of going for a trap when his feral isn't ready. He jumps to the priest and then gets his trapped premonitioned by Zunyaki. Although he could simply stand and wait around for him to use it, doing so wastes precious time you could be DPSing. 
but it's also worth noting that your kill attempts will usually involve a stun in a DPS, which can immediately shut down their pressure if they have any. However, wasting freezing traps on DPS can often set you behind and lose you the game. Only do it in very dire situations. Ok everybody, that just about wraps up this jungle guide. Now you just need to go out and apply everything you learned in the arena, and you're sure to see an increase in your rating. We'd also recommend sharing this guide with your teammates, so they can also understand how jungle works. Thanks for watching and be sure to plus skill if you enjoyed.